Hi, today we are talking about how to start believing positive feedback when you've grown up with a lot of criticism. And that's the topic for today. And I'm Rachel McLeod. I'm a mental health therapist, a coach, mentor, speaker, and we're going to dive in. I specialize in helping people do the brain work for resolving symptoms of anxiety, depression, and traumatic stress, and really transforming how they do life how they realize their goals and how they show up in relationships. And so this topic is right on point because there is a brain process for starting to believe positive feedback when you've grown up with a lot of criticism. And so um, a lot of times people can really be frustrated with themselves or friends can be frustrated. Just, just accept the compliment, right? Um, just say thank you, you know, um, and we can be frustrated ourselves because we're just, why can't I just believe it? Um, because, and we don't and um, and there's a reason for that I'm going to talk about that today um, and yeah so we're gonna dive into brain function and this problem and how it resolves and when you understand how it, what, what's going on in the brain you can see that there is a path to resolving this and um, it's pretty wonderful so and it's not it doesn't take that long so it's and it's much faster than decades of living with this problem and so it's, it's worth a dive in and um, helping the brain work through this so that you can really enjoy the positive feedback all around you. So um, let's talk about what's going on here. Um, when we cannot accept positive feedback, when we can't accept um, the, what people are telling us, um, I'm recovering from a little cold here, so I'm at the end of it and it's just will not it's it's lingering anyway um so bear with me over here um but when when we will not believe the positive feedback that people are giving us um <clears throat> what's happening inside is that there's there's this is in a conflict um there is a conflict with what's showing up on the outside world trying to make its way to our inner world and the inner world does not match it um, the inner world is in conflict with it for many reasons. A lot of this has to do with subconscious programming. Um, and, and really, the conflict is with what's coming from the outside world with how you feel and know yourself. Your, your unconscious beliefs about yourself, um, your conscious beliefs about yourself, um, and those things not matching up. Your brain really has a hard time with inner conflict and, and this kinds of conflict. This is why we want to help the brain work through this because um, it, it's time to. And, uh, and, that, and the brain can get stuck right there for a really long time. You know, you, know, you might have been working on this for decades. Um, so that spot where that conflict happens, there's a lot of wonderful things right in there that when you know what to do with, um, this really resolves really, really quickly. So um, the inner, the way we know ourselves, and the unconscious and subconscious um, knowing um, and feeling about ourselves really um, is, is a subconscious programming issue. And this part of us is formed very much, almost entirely before we're seven. Our subconscious mind we start filtering our brain starts shifting and we start being able to say hey I don't like that no um, but before then we don't really have that ability so we're just accepting a bunch of things and our brain is mirroring things we're watching our parents talk about themselves or we're watching our parents um, receive positive feedback how are you doing it oh we reject that oh, okay uh, I'm gonna reject that too um, we have sometimes some of our parents are helping us grow by giving us a lot of negative feedback, a lot of criticism. So then we, our subconscious mind believes that um, that criticism is, is important for growth. And so it wants to keep getting it because I want to grow. Right. And so these these some of these equations are learned long before our, we even um, hit puberty. Right. So um, there's a lot of that stuff that comes in to influence. Um, how we feel about ourselves, what we know about ourselves, um, how we grow, um, what we need, what our needs are. Um, and so that gets in there. And that can be really frustrating for a 30 year old, a 40 year old, a 20 year old, a, a 70 year old, because they're like, I'm past that part of my life. I want to be able to think and feel how I want to. I know things should be different. I want to stop this. 
and can this can really feel like there's you don't have very much control because your subconscious mind controls all these things and so if you can't influence the subconscious mind you really don't get out of this um, and there's a lot of false information about how to do that um, especially for people with anxiety depression trauma disorders or if you grew up with a lot of um, complex childhood trauma and um, dysfunction and those sorts of things and so um, because it's a little different if you've got that because there, if you've got those issues um, they are a sign that your mind body system is not working through subconscious material well or any material well there's a processing delay or impairment and so <clears throat> when you're like hey brain shift it's like i can't i'm stuck um and so and then not only that if your brain your brain is so busy trying to resolve all the old stuff that it's really not available for the new stuff um, but what's really cool here is that if we actually um, work with the brain and help it accomplish what it wants it will then turn around and help us accomplish what we want and there's really some really fun sneaky ways it's not sneaky but <laughs> it feels you you're being playful with your inner world. You, you can pretend you're sneaking up on your subconscious mind, but you're not. So, um, but there's really some really great ways to be able to do both the things at the same time. Help the brain get what it wants and also resolve the um, this problem with receiving positive feedback. <clears throat> so, um, Okay, I want to say tons of more things here, um, but I think we've laid a, a pretty good foundation here. So one of the, the, the thing is conflict. Um, we're also dealing with some dissonance. Like we are not like receiving the, dis the, um, the positive feedback feels dissonant to us. Maybe it feels like, uh, maybe you hear some, if you, if you listen in and tune into yourself, if you attune to yourself, you're going to hear a lot of dis what, what, what's, What's your body doing that's telling you this is dissonant with me? This does not match me. This sounds inharmonious. This sounds like a, a note that's off. My mind body system is playing this note and there's a chord that's just dissonant here that's coming from the outside world. And oh, look, it's positive feedback. Wow, positive feedback is dissonant with what I've got going on with my inner world. And so you can pick up that dissonance, tune into it and really use it to heal. Um, this is all great um, information and it's it's the material that actually needs to make it through your mind body system past the survival system and and around to the stations in your brain where they do healing and put thoughts and feelings to words and um, the wonderful things that your brain does the higher functioning things but that dissonance sometimes is is <coughs> it's often <coughs> that dissonance is often um, distress of some kind and so the survival system will respond to it as if it's a danger or a threat and push it back out um, that's why these types of things have a hard time making it through the healing process and uh, the growth process and maturation process and why we really are looking for them to help them through so they can finally do what they're supposed to do too um, our survival system loves all the positive emotions um, but it uses the negative emotions to determine threat levels and if we're in threat or not. And if we are, it shifts into survival mode and that rejects and turns off, that rejects these things and turns off the processing and the higher level reasoning. And so when we find dissonance, like, oh, that doesn't feel good, um, then that's really when we can escort it through the process so we know our survival system's not really gonna let that through. And if we still have this problem, your survival system is doing this a lot, okay? So, um, and there's a lot to escort through to get the healing. But, um, so we've got dissonance. We've also got, one of the things that's going on here is um, cognitive distortion. Um, this is what happens in the early stages of the brain working through something. Um, and usually if we're having cognitive distortions, I'm going to explain which ones these are. There's about 15 common ones. Um, that means that the brain's healing process has stopped right there and it can't go further. And so it's just, it's, well, this is as good as we can do, so we better use it. And it's not a fully, a full product. It's not a, it's not a product of wellness. It's the best we can do. It's the best sense we can make out of this situation. And so um, there are so many of them, black and white thinking, um, all or nothing, um, uh, so many of them. 
<laughs> overgeneralization, there's, there's a list. Um, in this case, um, the subconscious programming is using the, the cognitive distortion mental filtering. And so that means the brain is automatically filtering out positive information about yourself. It's happening unconsciously. It's fast. It's it's not something you're thinking about. You're not making a choice to do this. It's just happening. Um, the other thing is that in this one, it's also disqualifying the positive. There's ways people, you know, it's like, oh, well, that was just one time, um, or well, you know, but it was really, it was really uh, Rebecca that helped with that one, or it was really, oh no, um, that was just a fluke. Um, those types of things are how we will um, dismiss this from uh, from being able to take it deeply inside and you can be consciously aware of this you can be like okay I can see it and you can work on shifting it um, <clears throat> but it's a lot of work because it's a subconscious program and now you're kind of fighting your subconscious mind and so what I like to do is jump in here and help the subconscious mind and the whole mind body system knock it off <laughs> just to stop this entirely at the root and so um, so there's there's several ways to do this, but ultimately we want to get that whole program processing. We want to get past the survival system all through the parts of the brain. They will take that program apart, look at it, and be like, oh, look at this. This doesn't match us. Oh my gosh, this is this happened in you know 1995. Now, oh, that doesn't belong here. And it'll go through and just reorganize this thing, and then it will send the whole new program back in, and then you'll watch, you'll either notice that you're able to receive them more or more fully, but some changes are gonna happen, and whatever that change is, um, we keep working it till we get it where we want it. And till you are just unconsciously, you've got a subconscious program for receiving positive feedback. Um, so um, this all has to do with how brains are processing and, and what, can, can brains make accurate thinking? Can brains make, and that's really what we're gonna to get to here. We wanna look at accurate. Um, I'll talk about that in a second, but cognitive distortions are not accurate. They're, they're an in-process kind of thing. It's like, okay, good job, brain, but hey, let's go more. We can't really use this, because the more we use cognitive distortions, distorted thoughts, the more distorted our life will be, the more distorted our relationships will be. Something will be off and we will not be able to find it. And so we want to call the brain when we can identify one, and this is a lot of what I'm training people to do, is can you identify, oh, that's a cognitive distortion. Oh, okay, I, I know where I'm at in the, in, the, in the healing process here. Let's get this going a little further. So there are strategies for this. When you run into cognitive distortions, this is what you do. And you get your brain to <laughs> cook it a little longer. This is half-baked. <laughs> this, this, yes. So uh, this can be so much fun. Um, helping your inner world can be such a fun thing to do. And the more fun it is, the faster we heal. Um, we don't have to take these things so personally, like I'm so bad because I'm this. No, you didn't. You didn't create your subconscious programming. Um, it's just time to help it upgrade to you and help your brain get rid of stuff that um, it, it thought was accurate, but it's not. It thought was helpful, but it's not. It's no, or it was helpful and it's no longer helpful. We're constantly outgrowing our subconscious programming, but if, if we can't get it processed or reprocessed, um, if we can't get our brain to, to work with it and upgrade it, then we're gonna find that it does, our subconscious programming doesn't match our life, it doesn't match who we wanna be, what we're trying to accomplish, and those sorts of things. And so um, doing this little bit of work um, it really is so transformational because you really no longer have to fight yourself to do the things you wanna do. Um, you no longer have to be, okay, I'm gonna be on guard, let me make sure I can take positive feedback. <clears throat> no, we want that to be a natural process. You you don't want to use so much mental energy there. It will take away from the, the places where um, you want to be able to use your mental energy. And that's one of the reasons why people with anxiety, depression, traumatic stress, and all these subconscious challenges are so exhausted all of the time. It's because we're, we're not using ourselves in the way that we're the best ways. Um, and so... Um, let's let me talk about a couple more things here um, uh, sometimes we have beliefs about positive feedback like um, sometimes it's just new like we just didn't have that in childhood we didn't have positive affirmation we didn't have someone saying these things so it's new so our nervous systems like huh 
Um, uh, um, and new in the survival system is bad. It's just bad. New is bad, period. We're going to die. Um, and so a lot of times there will be distress because there's not actual neurology for something new like positive feedback. Brains make circuitry and, um, um, and neurology to support the things that it realizes we need. So you could be needing this for a long time, but if your brain hasn't realized you need it, it won't make it for you. Um, you can want it all you want to, but the brain's like, I don't know what to do with this information. It just feels weird. Get it out of here, right? That's not what we want <laughs> to do. We want it to. So there's a way of working with new things and getting the brain to build new things like being able to receive and enjoy and feel comfortable with positive feedback. And so sometimes it has never been built at all. And sometimes it's just been built to such a small level that it just needs to grow. We need to get in there and help it help to, it to come up to date. Maybe, you know, it's like you need a 10 and it's out of three. We need it to, we need your brain to get it to a, a 10. So, um, there's lots of new things that brains think are very dangerous. So that are wonderful. These are things we want and it's just, and so when we, when we get there, <laughs> we want to help, um, the mind body system really, um, get that information. And I'm just, that doesn't make sense to you, but let me tell you, um, that the survival system right there is the one that's going to freak out and turn off the whole um, build something new for you, build something new and awesome. And that process, the survival system is the one that will turn that off and say, absolutely not get that out of here. Um, it's the gatekeeper. And so, um, why I have people use these specific interventions that I teach it because it talks specifically to that part of the brain and sends it the information that it needs in its native language, because it, it, the native language of that part of the brain is the body. Um, it doesn't, it's not a logical thing. It doesn't care about the words. It doesn't care about reasoning. Um, we really need to influence that part of the brain while all of this is happening. Say, hey, chill. Hey, let this information through. Hey, we're safe. We're not in danger. I know that's weird stuff coming through, but it's safe. We want that in here. And it will just, it'll all of a sudden get to the other parts of the brain. They will be like, ooh, look at all the things we can make with this new information that we weren't getting before because the survival system was blocking that out. Okay, so... Um, so, um, we, so these are things that we might need to build, especially if you had a childhood full of criticism, um, you, you haven't had a lot of experience or practice with positive feedback. Um, <clears throat> and your mental filtering may have happened so early that maybe even if teachers would have said, Hey, good job. You wouldn't, it would have discounted it. You would have filtered it out so that it, your brain wouldn't even have seen it. So, um, sometimes we are punished for positive feedback or for being positive with ourself. Um, this is because um, it, it maybe with parents or teachers or adults, caregivers in your life, um, they also, our brains need to make the outside world match the inner world. They just have a big need for this. And so if a parent's inner world is very negative um, and yours is positive, there will be an impulse to make your inner world match theirs. Um, it doesn't mean, it's not that they don't love you. It's just, this is how brains are. And so we will do some pretty ugly things because of what our brains do. Um, and so if we're not aware of this, then we will really cause, we can really cause some harm. Um, teachers do this, doctors, Lord, humans in all places do this. So if you're a human in a position, you probably have done this. If, even if it's like, this is another challenge people have in the opposite is that their inner world is pretty functional and they will partner with unfunctional people in education, work, and they will try to pull that one to be more functional. And this is also out of balance in an entirely different way. Another talk for another day. Um, but we, we are, we are constantly doing this. <laughs> we actually have to work with the brain to not do this and allow people to be where they're at and allow ourselves to be where we're at and not spend our energy trying to fix everything else. Um, that's all I'll say there. Um, uh, there's also some current, this is subconscious programs as well. These are, uh, these can be happen in many different ways, but there are um, current associations the brain is making with success. So if it believes that criticism is part of the success process, then your brain will not, will be trying to get that. It's like, no, I don't want the positive feedback. That's not going to help me. I need to succeed here. Give me the negative. Um, and so um, we'll find ourselves unconsciously surrounding ourselves with critical people 
people. Um, we, if nobody's providing us criticism, we will do it ourselves. We have a, a subconscious storehouse of material that's available to us. We actually want to flush that stuff out and get it processed and get the brain to release it for us so that it, the subconscious mind is like a garden. Um, there are weeds in there and uh, we can plant in healthy stuff, but you kind of got to know how that works. I have videos and posts and my blog about that, uh, working with the subconscious mind. Um, <coughs> go ahead and read those. I will absolutely nerd out here and we will get off topic and then that will be that. Um, and I will have had a great time either way. <laughs> so I'm going to go back to this topic <coughs> and let you read about that. Um, um, I use, I help the brain in the exact same way with all these things. We just use some different strategies along the way. We dress it up a little differently or we, we accompany it in different with a strategy plus intervention use talking to the survival system. And so that the, we can influence the brain to do help it complete the healing work that it needs to accomplish. Um, okay. So I talked about the newness and building subconscious programmings for being, um, uh, being, having positive affirmation. Um, this is also the, one of the programs here that is, needs to get cleaned up, um, is the program that we have for being seen. Um, these are our intimacy programs. Um, these are really important. If we cannot, if our nervous system cannot tolerate being seen in a positive light, that's an issue, right? And we need to walk it through, um, resolving that and becoming comfortable being seen in a positive light. Um, that's a process, not a long process. It usually takes the brain, catching the brain about three times in a very specific area. And where there's a little, there's usually like, we'll do some root work around, um, the origins of this, if probably in early childhood. And then we want to repattern the entire habit where the subconscious programming is still running and help the brain shift out of those. Those we catch about three times. So, um, and then the brain is like, Oh, I get it. I'm gonna do this. And yes, you go right on ahead and we'll start seeing it switch over. That's when my clients will tell me I was in this situation and this new thing happened, or I did, I will usually get so enraged and I was fine. And you know, so those sorts of things are what we're looking for that the subconscious programming, the mind body system went and replaced the program that used to be freak out or, um, survival state or survival mode. <clears throat> and um, and switch in something that's more aligned with your highest self, your 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 hopes, your goals, your visions of of your higher level skills. So we want the brain to put that stuff in there for you because you already got it. It's in there. We need to for your brain to hook it up right here. Um, so there's that. Um, okay. So I what I put here. And I, I'm not ta I'm not exactly remembering why I put this here, but I'm going to remember why I put this here because it absolutely belongs here. Um, is emotional intelligence um, when we help our brain do this? This process is the same process our brain uses to create emotional intelligence um, and emotional maturity um, and accuracy. <coughs> um, and so uh, the ability to receive, to be seen in a positive light and to um, acknowledge truths about ourselves is very emotionally intelligent. To be able to know um, this, is where, this is where I am accurately and, um, and absolutely there's positives here and there's, there may be some negatives here and I, I'm open to them both. I can see them both and I can see that there are no negatives here. There are times like that. I can see, we don't need to go invent them, right? That would not be, that would be fulfilling subconscious programming for something, um, you know, cr creating, a, a habitually creating a emotional state that's more similar to a dysfunctional childhood moment or timeline. Um, subconscious minds love to do that. That's why we want to resolve the emotional home, the childhood emotional home, work through that so that that need to replicate that resolves the brain will release that need um, <coughs> more and more. It's not usually like that. Sometimes it really can feel like that though. Um, uh, emotional intelligence. So, um, but having the emotional intelligence to have accurate confidence, right? Sometimes we're afraid of being overly confident. Um, um, but, and that makes us be underconfident. We're not being underconfident is not any more emotionally accurate and mentally accurate 
or accurate than being overly confident. And so it, it can be really challenged to get accurate. And, and you need a lot of emotional intelligence to get accurate in your confidence and in your ability to receive positive feedback. Right. This is also um, the brain will have increased ability to determine if positive feedback is safe or not. Um, is this uh, somebody trying to manipulate me or is this actual truth? We need that emotional intelligence available to be able to determine that. Um, and your emotional intelligence is one of the things that determines that helps you determine all of those things. Um, if, if we don't have high levels of emotional intelligence, we have a hard time determining what's what's good, what's not good, what's for our highest good. We can't really select that. Um, we can't do, go through, become intelligent on these things. We just kind of be too open, too receiving, too blocking out, um, and really not finding that sweet spot. That's part of what emotional intelligence does. Is it's, it, it has the intelligence to look through and sift and sort and find that spot that, oh, this feels really good. Oh, look at all these skills. You know, That's what we're looking for. That's the end product here, um, which is really when you can start believing positive feedback. When those things are on, it will be very natural, effortless, um, uh, easy, simple, allowing, and um, consistent and stable. This will be something that, that your, your system will be able to take and sink deep into your subconscious programming. Write new subconscious programs for that. And that's really what we want to do. That's what I would say is a complete process. And then that process, once it gets to that place, will start to keep maturing. It's, it's on a maturation process. Um, anything that makes it through um, the, this process, our mind-body system's natural process, past the survival system, through the other parts of the brain, that stuff through the other parts of the brain, we do not really have to guide that very much at all. It's really, can we get it past the survival system? They know what they're doing. Um, they just can't get the reports because the survival system's like, nope, 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 nope. Um, so a lot of mental illness, illness is like they're starving up there. Like the material they would use to grow um, is not making it up there. And so we will see dysfunctions. But um, like not being able to believe positive feedback. So um, this one was really, this video was really about making that positive feedback, making it, sinking it deep in there. Um, I, I think there are tons of videos about what, what it's like, their skills for this, how to say it acceptably, how to say thank you in a great way. Um, but this one's really how to shift the, the inner world to be able to match and receive positive feedback and to invite it. Um, so there's so many, I, I, I could go on and on because I think we have, I know that we have lots of strategies for teaching other people not to give us positive feedback, um, that we will actually um, condition them not to give it to us either. Um, sometimes this is happening in marriages and then we're just like, they don't ever give me positive feedback, but actually your brain taught them not to by it because you, you needed to match your inner world with their behavior. And so over time they learned that, oh, don't do that for them. Don't, that makes them uncomfortable. Oh, okay, out of love, I will not give you positive feedback, right? And so a lot of times when people shift this, that's kind of why I want to get to work instead of just complain about spouses and what they're doing and what they're not doing. Because um, if we, when we switch this and help them be available and receiving and welcoming uh, positive feedback, a lot of times uh, they'll start seeing, oh, their spouse is doing this, or oh my gosh, I would have done this, or and I wouldn't have done, and so my bad, and hey, I would like positive feedback. And the partner sometimes like, oh great, good, I like this new game. I've been waiting for this, you know? And sometimes we'll find that partners are really, they do not have the neurology to provide positive feedback, and now the ball is in their court. And so doing our, I, I find doing our own healing work, or my client's own healing work, really really um, sheds light on the next step. And so, yeah. So uh, I want to invite you to try out three of my, my favorite interventions for this. Um, that I have a free program called Interventions for Inner World Transformation. Um, these interventions are my favorite ones for working with that part of the brain. Um, so these interventions are very different than traditional talk therapy strategies that focused on the prefrontal cortex, this fun thinking center up here that we all love um, and we love to hate. Um, and this is not the part that we're working with here. We will help that part accomplish the work it wants to do because that's a lot of reasons why your symptoms are showing up because this part wants to do some healing work um, 
So we'll help that part, but these interventions work with the survival system and getting it to shift out of survival mode and allow healing and processing and growth mode. And so um, I teach the um, three of my favorite interventions, like I said, and they're in short videos. These are the same interventions I offer to all of my coaching clients, all of my therapy clients um, at People Love Them. Someone just said, um, sent me an email. Thank you for um, I these specific emails. I'm starting my mornings calm and regulated for the first time ever. And um, they're using them. Um, so it's really, these are so transformational. Even if you do no other work with me, this is wonderful. Um, if you find that you that these are very regulating for you, and you can watch your brain, I teach you in the in the training how to notice if they're working. If you're notice, and and some people, most people don't need me that training. That little video that I have added in there, they don't even need that. They're like, oh my gosh, this happened and this happened and this happened. So, um, but it, I don't. I totally lost my train of thought. So, okay, if you find, <laughs> here we go, if you find that the interventions really are working for you and you want to transform the way you're doing life, the way you're realizing your goals, the way you're showing up in relationships um, by resolving your symptoms of anxiety, depression, and traumatic stress, um, I have a program for that as well. It's the same program I use for my clients. It's called Inner World Transformation. I've made that available on my website. You can look at that. I've put that there because I know not a lot of therapists teach people how to do this for themselves and a lot of therapists do not do this specific work and so I wanted to make that available to more people so that people can heal um, there you can do this work very independently you can do this work along with your your favorite therapist um, you can I have an intensive coaching program if you want me to walk you through this um, you can look at that on my website fill out an application and we'll chat about it um, and get you started if that's what you want to do as well and you're a fit so um, that's what's going on thank you for joining me um, this it's really it's so time for you to receive and enjoy positive feedback um, I'm really excited for you so thanks for joining me take care